gang, what's up? It's Trollbot.exe back with a new video. And today, I will be covering the history of the Metal Hero franchise. If you're a Tokusatsu fan, then you have almost certainly heard of Kamen Rider, Super Sentai, or Ultraman. But have you ever heard of the Metal Hero series? Even though it's not as obscure as other Tokusatsu out there, it is still not really shown in the limelight compared to the three counterparts I've shown earlier. Also, this is going to be a multi-part series. Yes, again. So, let's get to it. Calling all Tokusatsu fans near and far, it does not matter who you are. Hey, that rhyme. You may have heard of Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, and maybe even Ultraman. However, have you heard of the Metal Heroes? No? Well, you're gonna hear of them now in these following videos. So, the Metal Hero franchise was another tokusatsu franchise created by Toei that ran from 1982 to 1999. The franchise featured heroes in metallic armor, unlike the spandex of Super Sentai or Cloth of the Kamen Rider, or the robotic look of Ultraman. Actually, Super Sentai used cloths until Goggle 5, and they started using spandex from Dynaman on. Hey, you might have seen some Metal Hero series, and you never knew it. So let's begin! It was late 1981, and the tokusatsu genre was trying to go into a crash, with two of its biggest franchises, Kamen Rider and Ultraman, coming into a halt with the end of their latest installments, Kamen Rider Super 1 and Ultraman 80, respectively. The only big tokusatsu franchise running during the 1981-82 year was the relatively young Super Sentai franchise, with its fifth installment, Taiyo Sentai Sun Vulcan. It was also during that season that the Super Sentai franchise was officially declared a franchise. While Toei focused on its next installment, that being Dai Sentai Goggle 5, as I mentioned previously, an artist by the name of Katsushi Murakami drew a picture which depicted a metallic hero with a sword in space. This caught the attention of producer Susumu Yoshikawa, who would get the idea to read a solo hero show that rivaled Kamen Rider, but unlike Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, without the involvement of Shotaro Ishinomori. Correction, Ishinomori was only involved in Goranger and JAKQ. The original title of this project was going to be Space Share of Z. I think the Z was supposed to be pronounced Zeta, which traces of can be found in Gavin's finishing attack, the Laser Z Beam slash Laser Zeta Beam. There were also other title ideas like Genjiro and Ginbri. Everyone eventually settled on Gavin, named after the French actor John Gavin. They decided against the Japanese name because English names were easier to trademark. So, after that debacle was over, producers decided to cast Kenji Oba from the third and fourth Super Sentai series, Battle Fever J, and Denshi Sentai Denzi Man, respectively. Yoshikawa told Oba that should the show drop to the single digits in ratings, it's getting canned. And, even though it did that twice, Space Sheriff Gavin aired from 1982 to 1983, with 44 episodes, and was very successful getting average ratings of 18.6%. I think these ratings are based on how many people are watching it in a specific area, rather than how many people liked it. So, from what I can gather, anything over 10% is great. So, the plot. Gavin was sent to Earth on his next mission, Earth being the home of his mother. He was sent there to defend the Earth against the Maku, an intergalactic criminal organization led by Don Horror. He sees the Earth as an obstacle in his quest for universal domination. So, he wants to conquer the Earth but not really destroy it. Also among the Maku ranks is Hunter Killer, who was once a partner of Gavin's father, who was named Voicer. 
Okay, you got that? Good. So, Gavin was so successful that late into the series, a sequel was in the work. The sequel's hero would debut in the final three episodes. And in order to attract attention, Toei announced that Kenji Oba would return as Gavin in said sequel, which would become Space Sheriff Sheraban. This time, Hiroshi Watari will take on the role of Den Iga, a member of the Iga Ninja Clan that Gavin met. After being transformed into Space Sheriff Sheravan after an attack by Buffalo Doubler, Den was left in charge of protecting Earth once Gavin had finished Don Harbor and the Maku. This time, Sheravan would have to face a threat from the Genmu dimension, that being the Space Crime Syndicate Mado, led by the mysterious Demon King Psycho. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is his name. <laughs> okay, back to Sheravan. Unlike Gavin, Sheravan was a human being that was born and raised on Earth. In contrast to Gavin, whom, also being half human, was born and raised on planet Berg. Running from 1983 to 1984, although it was not as successful as Gavin, with an average rating of 13%, Sheravan was popular enough to warrant the production of a second sequel, though that sequel as Sheriff would not appear in Sheravan. Also, the Metal Hero series ran alongside Super Sentai, with Gavin running alongside Goggle 5, and Sheravan running alongside Dynaman, aka when the Super Sentai series started using Spandex. <laughs> For Shider, Toei cast the late Hiroshi Tsuburaya, son of Eiji Tsuburaya, one of the co-creators of Godzilla and Ultraman, and founder of Toei's rival studio, Tsuburaya Productions. So that's interesting. Like Sheravan, Shider was a human, more specifically a college student, named Daya Sawamura, who got his powers and sued from a blue energy called Vavilos Particles. Shider got his moniker from the ancient hero who 12,000 years prior defeated the Mu Empire and beheaded its leader Kublai, who was corrupting the hearts of humans. In the present day, Kublai returns as a leader of the Fushigi World Puma, an evil cult who sees Kublai as a god, and they also destroy many planets as part of Kublai's plan on conquering the universe. Kubalai selected Earth to establish the second new empire, and Dai must finish him off and prevent that from happening. The series ran from 1984 to 1985 for 49 episodes, and the final episode featured the three space sheriffs teaming up, bringing an end to the space sheriff trilogy with an average rating of 12.5%, and Shider ran alongside Chodenshi Bioman. However, a whole decade later, in 1995, Shider would get adapted into the second season of VR Troopers. So, that's interesting. television series run, Toei decided not to continue the Space Sheriff series, and instead decided to do a completely original project that still retained aspects from the Space Sheriff trilogy. This project originally went under the title Demon Hunter De Niro, yes, after Robert De Niro. And I am not making any of this up. After that, it went under Monster Investigator Juspian, which was very close to the final title, Mega Beast Investigator Juspian. Juspian being the fusion of the words Justice and Champion. Originally, there were only supposed to be good monsters that Juspian captured and take to a monster ranch where they roam freely. The direction of the show was decided after a lot of debate. Due to the Space Sheriff series' success, the budget was twice as high as usual, 
It was originally supposed to start airing on March 1st, 1985, but shooting was delayed, leading to episodes 46 to 49 of Scheider being made. After further broadcasting adjustments, the premiere was pushed back two weeks to March 15th. The series was also originally supposed to have every episode take place on a different planet. However, it was set on Earth from episode 4 on because kids were more familiar with the planet. Also, on that same episode, Totally did away with the iCast slash We'll Be Right Back screen, which, unlike the Space Shield trilogy, weren't just still images of character illustrations, but it actually showed Justin turning his head to the camera. Here, I'll even play for you right now. So the series ran from 1985 to 1986 with a total of 51 episodes. Also, it ran alongside the Super Sentai series, Dengeki Sentai Change Man. Just being got even lower ratings than Shider with 11.8% and did not lead to a sequel. When it was originally released on VHS, the translated title was Space Wolf Just Being, causing confusion on what the title of the series is. The VHS title was in reality just the title of the ending theme song. For the fifth installment, the proposed titles included Metal Man and Great Dimensional Warrior Starlong. The final title of Spielbahn came from famous director Steven Spielberg. This show was to put the spotlight on scientific research. Also, this was the first Metal Hero series to feature robot monsters as a monster of the week in the form of the battle Mechanoids. Spielbahn was to have human drama and tragedy, and a feud within the Ops, aka the Waller Empire. On the other hand, there are comical moments everywhere, inspired by Go Ranger, the first Super Sentai series. Hiroshi Watari returns to play Spielbahn, and to accompany him is Makoto Sumikawa playing Diana, the first ever metal heroine. Up until this point, a Metal Hero series premiered in March, but this time Spielbahn premiered on April 7th, 1986 and ran to March 9th, 1987 for 44 episodes. Running alongside the 10th Super Sentai series, Supernova Flashman. When Spielbahn reached Brazil, they marketed it as a sequel to Justbian. Due to how successful Justbian was there. Also, Spielbahn footage was used throughout both seasons of VR Troopers, or as I like to call it, Back in Japan, Spielbahn gained average ratings of 11.2%, a bit lower than Justbian. Toei, likely due to average ratings never getting close to, let alone exceeding Gavin's, decided to abandon the Space Hero format and create something entirely fresh with the next installment, Superhuman Machine Metalder, which I will cover in the next video, alongside World Ninja War Jiraiya and Mobile Cop Jibin. So, in the meantime, later fools! Bye.